Show 61, scene one. Billy Smith. <laughs> and Take action. One. And action. Boom. Nice, dude. Good. Good yeah. to go. All Very right. Very well done. Well, we're back for episode 61 of the show. We got, as always, Gunny Matheson. Welcome the show. Joe Schmidt. And our special guest tonight, NRHA Commissioner Billy Smith. Is that what his title is? that what your title is? New Commissioner. Right? Commissioner. Yeah. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah. Well, well it's, not, it's not actually new commissioner. No. He is a new commissioner, but the title is actually right. commissioner. Right. The title isn't new commissioner, but he I is the new commissioner. I didn't make up the title. That, that came with it. So, <laughs> I didn't okay. demand to be called commissioner. That all came with it. It wasn't wrote in the contract. <laughs> you you must to. kneel to me and yeah. call me commissioner. Yeah, as pretentious as that is, no, <laughs> it did not uh, happen. Uh, well, funny. we're glad to have you, and it's I think what a great opportunity to because we have tens and tens of viewers, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna get a lot of people, new people, getting to see you. I'm glad to be here. Slightly horrified, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Come on. No, it'll be it'll be easy. It'll be easy. So you've I've been that before. You got you got hired last year, and you were official January one. Is oh, that right? I was. That's correct. January one. And how are you settling in? Good. Yeah, it's uh, people are great. They've been very welcoming. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun. <clears throat> that's good. And um, you came from the APHA. Came from APHA, and I was there for a dozen years, and uh, before that came from AQHA, so really the, my background's in breed registries, but um, I love reining. It's my favorite It's my favorite equine sport, always has been, and just a dream come true for me. Yeah, well, it's, in my opinion, and I'm a little bit biased here, but I think we have the the reigning business has the best thing going in the western world right now and i think if we were to have and this is no knock on anybody but i think um it's actually knocking on a lot of people but okay it is well i mean i i think uh, for growth i mean i think you can look at the numbers and i think the the <coughs> rope horse business and the barrel horse business and the reigning horse business are the things that are right now kind of on the rise for whatever reason don't know the reason but they are and uh, and that is not a knock on anybody because i respect no those you know, businesses are growing big time too yeah man. i was looking at some just some entry numbers just in the first two months and they're way ahead of last year just in two months for nrha yeah this yeah. year this year wow yeah so it was it was so shocking I had to go back and look again to make sure I was reading it correctly. But, yeah, so far this year's off to a great start. Yeah, and we uh, broke records last year for how much money was added. $24 million. Yeah, 24 incredible. Million. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I will say, so I think, <clears throat> you know, job performance is it's always – probably in this position rated on numbers and i think you've got a you've got a tough job ahead of you because the numbers are so good the numbers are so good and <clears throat> i like i very much like gary carpenter great guy known him for a long time actually was on the ec and on the committee when he got hired i, I mean i voted for him to get hired and i think he's you know he's been he, he, I just, I like, I like Gary, mm -hmm. but I think our industry, in fairness to what you're going to have to deal with, I think our industry has really grown because of outside factors. I think Yellowstone, I think the hundred X, I think there's a lot of things going on right now COVID that are to some extent, COVID to mm -hmm. some extent. Yep. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that happened in the industry to blow it up. And unfairly, you're coming in, hopefully in the middle of it, and and it's going to continue to to gain. But how do you, like, how do you feel about that? Looking at at, at where we're at now, how do you feel like you can make it continue to grow? Well, so you know, Gary's been my friend for a long time too, and what's happened in the last decade is NRHA's positions itself to deal with that kind of prosperity. Because not everybody can do that. Not every organization is prepared to do that. So 
<clears throat> there are things in place. The financial position of NRHA is really good. And so it's poised to take advantage of that. What, what I think the future has holds is the rewards are going to go to the entrepreneurs who think differently, who try to be creative, who try to do some things uniquely in the industry, and who try to try to help shape the community of Rainers um, in a way that um, you know meets the needs of the future. I mean, we've seen some of those kinds of things, even things like the the uh, the we talked about earlier the uh, the claiming class, Th things like that as a test as a pilot. That's an important feature, and I, that's one of the reasons I was happy to come to NRHA because I think we have people with that kind of spirit who will explore new things, do new things, and that's kind of what we were able to do in a different situation at APHA is try to do some things no one else had done before. I think it would be exciting for somebody like yourself to step into this role with the momentum and the and the people that are involved right now in it. And what a great time to be involved. And and to me, no more important time than to have somebody step in and and an opportunity. I mean, I think for the for the reigning, this is this is really a like the most important time maybe in our history because we've grown so much. We have so much momentum. And and if we've talked a lot of times. It's it's a little bit about also where do we go with it and what are our goals? Like, how much bigger can we get? Because we've talked in several shows, you know, full nominations are up. Everything's up. For the NRBC, for the NRHA, full nominations are up. We're, uh, I'm a little bit worried that we're outgrowing horse our horse averages. trainers. Horse sale averages are up. Yeah, well, everything's up. up. We, everything's up. We need more trainers. I don't yep. think there's any doubt about that. Um, and, and NRHA can play a role in that. I don't think we're the only player in that. But there's some opportunity. We even had a conversation with our professionals committee about that a little bit too, is how do we, what can we do to help spur new, uh, new trainers in the industry? And, and I, think, I, I, I think that's a super important factor. It's a growing pain. It's a, it's a challenge, but I'd rather deal with the growing pain than deal with, you know, how are we going to keep the doors open and things like that. So I, I've, I'm very privileged, and I don't take that for granted that, that I have the privilege of stepping in at this point in history and, and actually taking advantage of the fact that people like you all have helped build this over many, many years. I'm not, none of that's lost on me that... Uh, it puts a little added pressure, but it's good pressure. You know, it's the kind of pressure that says, you know, don't screw this thing up. These people have worked really hard. They've worked their whole lives. How do we keep this ball rolling? And, Man, if and our so we government think about that. would work the same way as that's working, we'd be doing good right now because they just blame the last guy for all the problems they have <laughs> next time. And then I have to, oh, yeah, we're not going <clears> to <throat> talk politics. Sorry. I don't, I, you know, I grew up with a guy who did not let me. <clears throat> have any excuses so there are no excuses and uh if it, i expect success but if we don't have success then i'll i'll take the hit for it but i haven't i have a great expectation that we will well and, and like i say i mean that's it's a it's big it's a tough position to step into it's an exciting position i'm sure but mm -hmm. it's also tough because we've had so much growth from outside of the association itself from outside of the EC and outside of the president and outside of everybody's there with, with Taylor and with some of the other people. And it's not just, it's not just that friends it's, of raining that have contributed yeah, so much mm -hmm. money, so many sponsors and, and, you know, <clears throat> Shannon Ray fits and, and uh, putting on big shows and now the hundred X coming in. And, um, you know, I think there's so many people that have done so much to grow it to this point. And so I was talking to a friend of mine, going back to what you said about developing trainers. I was talking to an uh, old friend of mine, Philip Solon, the other day about the numbers of horses were come, that, are, that are coming up now. And I don't know if you're on Facebook or not, but everybody is posting on Facebook, need help, need help, need riders, need... So how do you feel like... 
how does NRHA address that problem? How going forward? How do we try to get more people into our industry as far as trainers? Is it through the college programs, or what are your thoughts? Well, I think we we had a little bit of this conversation the other day about you know are the, there's are there some things we can do with some money we have available to help stimulate, especially new trainers who are just getting their feet underneath them, so that not only are we attracting new trainers, but the ones who are starting out become successful, that, that, that we get them over that initial hump that a lot of new trainers have. So w- there's some opportunity there to do yeah, some things. Maybe some, there, <clears throat> there might be some ways of approaching that. I, I, I don't think there's a magic bullet, but that's one of them. Another thing that we can do is, is develop a little bit closer relationship to some of the university programs. I think I think that helps some too. So I I kind of believe in more of a shotgun approach. There's a lot of things we can do that will have some impact and move them move along. I think our existing trainers can help us a lot in terms of not the traditional clinics, but clinics for trainers. Clinics for new people. You know, what have you learned over the years? so that we can help new trainer, you know, not make mistakes or not make as many mistakes, and so their business will flourish. There's a, there's a lot of creative things I think we can do to help. I don't think there's a, you know, magic bullet, but I think there's some things we can do that we can do to help, and I think a lot of that has to do with being really creative, and I think what, what at the university level, I think that there are a lot of different things we can do to bring them along that we haven't done in the past. And and we've got some good relationships in those areas. I think we can do can we that we can do some of those. So this is a question for everybody. So ten years ago, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, I'll use the University of, of River Wisconsin River Falls as an example because I grew up there and that was a program. Did you did you really grow up though there? <laughs> I was raised there. <laughs> That's a yeah, better story. Okay, right? sorry. I it's get sidetracked. Mean. I stopped his thought. Dead in the track. Sorry. So there used to be those kids would go to school with the intention of trying to be horse trainers, and, and several of those kids got placed every year. I don't feel like those programs are placing as many kids. I don't feel like those kids – have the I think they go to school and it's a class because they like horses, not because they want to make a living in the industry. It doesn't immerse you in horses like you're going to be in a job. Well, in right. our in our part of the meeting too, we kind of talked about taking some of the professionals money away from like written down publication to a more of a social media esque person that could interview and meet more trainers because the growth boom that we had was revolved around that uh, show that Taylor did where everybody got to know Tom, everybody got to know Mandy, everybody got to know Cade. I mean, they knew that you had your hip redone and asked you how it was. So I think, you know, somebody videotaping, interviewing people at horse shows, getting to know them could, could help stimulate more interest in what we have going on today because people are around their cell phones so dang much you know it's and and how about if we and i think trainers would be willing to do it everybody's super busy but i think everybody for the for knowing how reining horse trainers are i mean what if we hooked up a college program with a reining horse trainer just to go in and talk to them one day for one hour and and try and pitch them on okay this is this is a great future in this this is what you you know should strive to be uh in your horsemanship class in your college class and there's so many opportunities i mean if because the opportunities right now for if anybody wants to to go be a horse trainer it's never been better i mean when i was a kid i mean there was no place to go when i was 18 19 years old I mean, I sent out my resume to three or four of the top trainers, and they didn't need anybody. And, I mean, 
How could you not mean me? <laughs> I'm I mean, Tom McCutcheon. Come on. Don't you know Let's who I am? Let's be serious here. Yeah. You know? Don't you know who I'm going to be? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. And I, did, and I got no interest at all. Mm-hmm. And now they just want a video of you fogging a mirror. And you mm-hmm. can come ride. Yeah. Right? Am I, I mean, that's just how it is. Yeah. So I think it's such a great opportunity for your kids. If we could, if we could somehow, you know, integrate horse trainers with some of those programs even because there's horse trainers in every area i mean i know sean would do it out in ohio or anywhere out there i know I, you know we would do it here i know gunny would go talk i don't know if he would pass all the screenings <laughs> but he would be willing they, they wouldn't allow him yeah they wouldn't they would allow him do, on the they property would have to do a blood test okay and that mark is from getting my blood drawn okay from a doctor <laughs> nothing else or, well, there's then there's your feet, so that's another. Yeah, yeah. I will <laughs> wear some flip flops. So, <laughs> so that's the other thing. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm on a, on a, I'm on a board at a university in the equine program, and I think that's eminently doable. I think that's a simple. I mean, it's not. It's never simple when you're dealing with universities, but it's doable. It's a doable thing. I think there's a lot of opportunity there, but I think we have to do it. <clears throat> in a more creative way than we've done those kinds of things in the past, because you're dealing, the ten, you're dealing with different kinds of of students than you had then. You, you have a lot more urban students, a lot fewer who, you know, they've ridden five horses in their lives, not five hundred or fifty or something yeah. like that. It's a different, it's a different thing, and they're starting at a different place. It's not to knock on them. It's just that's where they're coming from most of them so you've got sort of a different kind of mindset but <clears throat> it's doable yeah it's worth but, doing yeah that's what done. you know that's what makes perfect <clears throat> sense that's mm-hmm. that's something i hadn't heard before and that makes perfect sense yeah and you see a lot of that it's coming out of the horse show world you see they especially even kids that have had a lot of success but they've had success with a few horses so they're kind of a mile deep and an inch wide and so it's you know, it takes some time. It's a different kind of person than, um, you know, people who grew up kind of when we did. And, and you, you know, you rode a whole lot of Bronx and you rode a whole lot of hor- dinks and you got to ride, you rode a lot of everything. So you had a little bit better sort of, you were more like a inch deep and a mile wide. You right. Yeah. Touched a lot of things. So it's a different mindset, but I think it's eminently doable. I think it's something we ought to take a run at. I mean, there's some things. We I don't do. know, you guys. I don't know. Um, you guys are talking about making your everything bigger and bigger. I'm thinking about selling all my stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting out. <laughs> Let's cash out. <clears throat> Let's slow down a little. Yeah. No. What's your? Yeah. You go. Go ahead and give your your no, uh, that, website that was, number here yeah, or yeah. Your name, yeah. whatever you call Fire it. Fire sale. Yeah. TMRaining.com. No, no, <laughs> not TMRaining. Oh. Oh. GM Raining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 4-H, maybe. Well, I'd even argue uh, even before that. I think that's one of the problems is we – and actually it's a problem in almost every sport. You remember how you'd play basketball for three months, Mm -hmm. you'd play baseball for three months, and they don't do that anymore. They, And they're specialized by the time they're 10. Yeah, right. They say, I don't like this. I'm not going to – yeah. Yeah, and we were having that conversation in the office about you. When we think about youth, we think about teenagers. Well, that's kind of too late. Yeah. So, so we have to really think more about kids than, than teenagers. Yeah, perhaps. so is it possible that we haven't seen the impact yet of The Last Cowboy and Yellowstone and these things, the American, all these things? Is it possible that those kids are, so this is all probably recent in the last five years that that stuff's been going on? Mm-hmm. Is it possible that we haven't seen that impact yet? Absolutely. Oh, I think for certain. Yeah, I think for certain. I I have two granddaughters who live in Manhattan. And and the you, you see kids in those areas in these very urban areas. There's still as many crazy horse kids, but they just don't have as much opportunity, yeah. especially in urban areas and is you, like around here in the North Texas area. You know, I didn't have a neighbor for the first 7 years around. Now I have 10,000 of them yeah. everywhere. So there's, there's less opportunity, which means we have to change the way we try to attract them. So, and I don't even know if this is feasible. I don't know if there's legal issues or, or you know, anything that, that would make it hard to do. But 
is there a way to to link these kids? Can can those kids that really want the opportunity? Can we link them with my place or Gunny's place or well, I don't know if we can link them with Joe, with Gunny's place <laughs> with Joe or still he might not pass. Yeah, yeah, some, still, still got some liability yeah. issues there. But can we link those kids where somewhere where they we make them go, sign a waiver <laughs> where they could go, uh, you know, for the summer and get the opportunity to be around the horses because. I think, like, I have a lot of grooms mm -hmm. that have developed into very, very useful, you know, cult starters and then beyond. Mm -hmm. But they start, they were a year, they were a groom. They mm -hmm. were just around it. They were yeah. just immersed in it. Right. So they got the feel of what level that we play at. You know, my harder problem sometimes is when I get in a 40-year-old that's been in the business forever but played at a medium to lower level and you can't step them up to your level i mean mm -hmm. because that's just where they are and that's they're <clears throat> set in their ways mm -hmm. where some of the younger ones that we get in that even if they just groom for a year and then you develop them they see what it is they see how serious they see what it takes to win in this industry but that takes a lot of time mm -hmm. for those kids and to figure out that work ethic and that's one of the problems you run into you get people that can't even wake up on time yeah you know or sure. they work for a month and they're going why aren't i riding why don't i have my own string when you're like no nah, it's going to take time you're going to have the opportunity and then now they're off to something else yeah yeah need well, more it's, UQs. it's yeah. a challenge and everything is because we we you know we look at our phones and we see people magically go from a to z overnight things like that we don't see everything in between you're right and so we leave we leave young people with this perception that it doesn't require a whole lot. You know, you can just do it. And, and, and we all know that's not correct. I, you know, I don't think it's an easy answer, but I think our focus needs to be more on the younger, on younger kids than it, the, not to neglect teenagers, but I think if we don't have some way of communicating to younger kids, um, it's going to be difficult because they will specialize in things really early and you've kind of lost them. Yeah. You know, it's a hard, it's a hard thing. But, but uh, in all the there's you know there's been some research on this kind of thing. But when you ask young kids about horses, the response is always positive. Mm -hmm. It's always a positive response. They never have a negative response about horses. So that's almost ingrained in us. It's just can we be smart enough to figure out yeah, how to yeah. cultivate it? Yeah. You know what would be great is if <clears throat> if the NRHA could team up with the AQHA and the APHA and whatever other associations in the thoroughbred industry and work out some kind of a thing as, as the horse industry, the equine industry is a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States. If they could work out some kind of a program that would make it easier for the, the Brazilians and the, uh, you know, I've got a kid right now from Germany, Japan. Oh, Japan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He didn't well, sound you just, German. Well, you just got one from Germany. Yeah. And he didn't really you, look German, you but just yeah, got one Japan is what I was Japan. going for. Yeah. They're yeah. close, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got the right. <laughs> yeah. But, <clears throat> you know, I mean, great kid, great mm -hmm. kid. But if we could, as a, as a industry, if we could have, some help through an equine conglomerate council, whatever you want to call them to get people in here because it's hard right now. It's a nightmare. If mm -hmm. you're doing the, trying to get the paperwork for a foreigner, mm -hmm. you know, get people that like he's saying, you get <clears throat> Yuki from Japan, greatest work ethic you'd ever want. And Joe then, even knows his name. Yeah. Tom I know. I have no idea what his name was. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but trying to get the visas and no all that, idea. it's just, it's a nightmare. And here you got one kid that he's got all the, you know, work ethic that you want. And now we're going to have trouble with his paperwork. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know. He actually does know his name, so that's how you know. He must be good write, if he knows his we name. We write a um, hundred letters or more a year on behalf of some of these visas request request so it's it's we see it we see yeah. it almost every day i mean don't surprise don't be surprised what you're talking about doesn't happen at some point there's some conversations going on i guess my philosophy is as organizations we often look at things through a straw 
instead of the bigger picture. And, and I, I've always been a fan of collaboration if we can figure out a way to do that instead of spending the same dollar over and over again by every organization. So, so that conversation actually started a long time ago. It's about how, how we can do some more things with kids because I don't think any organization alone can pull that off. I don't think right. they can. It's going to take some collaboration, some thought. And, Could you get more yeah. people from out of the country – than you do from around here wanting to work, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That That's a little bit of the problem is, and it's been that way for a while, is that the foreigners, they come here because they want to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want this so bad. And I think, I don't know why, but I, I, don't, I don't think there's less kids here that want to do it. I think there's more people training right now and there's more horses in training and there's more opportunity. I mean, there's, you know, we have twice as many riders as we had 15 years ago. There's more people filling the jobs. There's mm -hmm. just more jobs yeah. coming up mm -hmm. all the time. Right? Correct. It's, I mean, it's a growing pain. It's a good thing, but it's, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem for sure. But reigning has the unique capacity to draw more internationally than I think most most of the other sports just because of the cattle issue right. when you leave mm -hmm. when you leave the US. That's a unique position for us, which I think we need to take as much advantage of it as we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even where I live, all of my neighbors are Brazilian. They're bu they're bull riders. They all the ranches around me are owned by bull riders. So they you know they love this area. So it's an important feature. So on, an, on another topic a little bit, has there been discussions within the NRHA about the rate of growth? Has there been any discussions about, you know, I mean, there's so many events now and so much money added. And I know f for, <clears throat> the, for the horse trainers, it can be a little daunting about, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sitting down doing our schedule a, a few days ago and it's like, Okay, how are we going to train our three-year-olds? Well, the short answer is that that conversation is being had now. What can I mean? We're a we're a capitalistic organization. I mean, we 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 don't want to get in people's way, but it is it it can be a bit of a challenge. Now, I've kind of heard two two tales, and it may it may impact those numbers I was telling you about. It may be a fact factor in those. Some of the smaller shows at least anecdotally, are telling us they're doing better because some of the really – there's a whole collection of riders who are going to the bigger events and leaving more space for them. That could be a little serendipity for us, a way uh, where we could see some of these smaller weekend events begin to uh, – some resurgency. And we're seeing some numbers improve in those – too, which there aren't very, very many organizations out there who can say their smaller shows are starting to grow. So that that could be a positive, too. But, uh, you, you know, you have to think about it. We've thought about a lot of different kinds of things. You know, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, w when people make, um, have big purses, you know, they get paid and every and those kinds of things. But it's 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 limited in what we can do, but those conversations are ongoing. I think you'll, I think it's it's a conversation that we've had a lot. Well, I'm all, I'm all about capitalism. So, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> you so know, I, I get that. And I, <clears throat> and I think, I think you can also look at it as even in the biggest purses, if there's enough of them, it's not horrible that not everybody goes to the same big horse shows. Uh, so exactly. If there's a big one in the East and a big one in the West, and we don't have everybody going to the same. I think that's good. It's I think there's some good to that. You know, I'm in I, complete it, agreement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it keeps it from having to mark, uh, I, you know, like some of the other fraternities, for example. Uh, if there's a big one in the East and a big one in the West, I know a lot of people now, Scottsdale's got some better events. Mm -hmm. I think it's good that you don't have everything where you got to mark a 224 mm -hmm. on a three year old before the fraternity to win a prize. Right. You know, it kind of lets you get them out there and, um, so I see both sides of it for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think, you know, there's no, the way I look at these decisions we make is everything's a trade-off. You make a decision, there's a trade-off and, uh -huh. and you have to just weigh what those trade-offs are. But, 
I don't think we want to get in the way of innovation. I don't think we want to get in, in the way of people trying to be creative in the way they do things, as long as they're within the context of our rules. But um, I, I don't know of any organization, that, any discipline that's being as creative as what we've seen in reigning in the last few years. It's, it's, it's pretty remarkable, really. I think one of the coolest ideas at a horse show recently is the slide contest that they're going to have at the 100 X. I think it'd be a way to even grow our sport if somebody just wanted to enter the slide contest. Yep. And it could be an NRHA member and an NRHA moneyed event just to have a sliding contest. I've been going to Mexico for years, or 30 years. <clears throat> and Tom has to he's, a, he's an expert yeah. Charo yeah. guy. He oh, did yeah. the he's slap. He did the slap yeah. the thigh. Good oh, for yeah. you. Point the finger. But it's interesting. You you don't have to go back very far, and you'd see all kinds of horses. You go there today, it's all rainers. Yeah, for yeah. sure. All rainers. Yeah. But you don't see anything but rainers. So you know it's. Yeah. No. When you got a few around here. You know, yeah. Right? Mandy and I went to Mexico City and watched a, a Charo event. It's amazing. And it, it was incredible yep. because it was. Uh, and they they'd make the announcement, and now is is entering. Give me a Mexican name, Jose Pablo Sanchez. Pablo Sanchez, <laughs> and he was better at it than me. Yeah, yeah. Pablo Sanchez riding Gunners mm -hmm. Top Sale. Serio P. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you get the point. Yeah, and it, so they're all <laughs> they're almost all sale. that way now. Yeah, yes. they're all yes. they're all rainers. It's a it's a great auxiliary market for us it's it's, really it's unbelievable the so the the last three or four charo fraternity winners came from the legacy sale which is not was not the legacy now, sales wait a minute. goal was that the charo of mexico was that like what was the name that, of that was show? the the event. National Charo, Charo of Mexico Championship. Championship. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're in. Yeah. 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 Nacionales. Yeah. And it, yo. Campeon. Este año. Yeah. And, and it, was, it, it, it was the crown jewel. The creme de la creme. The creme de la creme <laughs> yeah. of the uh, Charo events, yeah. fraternity events in Mexico. And everybody went there. And and But the point being is they are... And, and and also a bit of a dilemma because and it happens at the it's not it's not just the legacy sale it's also the, the nrha fraternity sale and as a breeder it's also a bit of a dilemma because you can sell a really good yearling at that sale and if it goes and wins the national what did i say chariot of chariot of mexican championship yeah, I mean, there's no really record of that. Yep. So yeah. they get lost. They kind of get Mexico, lost, but not in NRHA. Yeah. yeah, right. So it kind of mm -hmm. gets so when when uh, who does our pedigree? So when Robin. that person does our pedigrees, <laughs> Robin Glenn, right? no, isn't it? Larry Caston, just shuddy. That's why I didn't Dude. say anything. Larry Caston, Jason be who Jackson, did it, right? They all do the pedigrees. Yeah. Robin Glenn. Yeah, Robin Glenn. Wow. Yeah, Robin Glenn, right? No, well, you Sarah to be. does them. But well, she, Robin Glenn does really all do, the right? rest of them, okay? Yeah. I See? mean, not to sponsor her, but she could send yeah. us a few shekels. Robin Glenn, for example. Yes. Whoever well, pedigree person. Does the pedigrees. <laughs> this thing might have been a superstar rainer, but it wins the mm -hmm. national You don't have to say Char 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 championship. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> and uh, you don't see it in the you know in the book in the book mm -hmm. they get right. sidetracked down there sometimes oh, yeah. at the end of the table talking about tom a lot you <laughs> that had nothing to do with do me no oh it had no nothing. it was about the uh it, i'm not even sure what we're talking about to be honest with you <laughs> i don't know where we are we got yeah. down that road about, about so, how do you know is it when they start speaking bad spanish <laughs> yeah yeah you, know, yeah. Spanish. Yeah. you got yeah. You pretty gotta, clear i gotta say something off the wall to reel them back in yeah. come on guys yeah. we're talking to him here yeah yeah so, <laughs> so 
But you were <clears throat> talking about the uh, sliding contest, and uh, nice. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I, well, and growth for our sport, something different, something yes. new, right? Yes. Uh, something fun, something not as difficult as raining. Raining is difficult, mm -hmm. right? Something that you can do that's raining that's you not can do it. Seven. You can participate. You can have fun. Yep. You can hang out, and actually, maybe very marketable to the general public that doesn't understand. Raining. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. It would so. be, I don't know, I think it would be a <clears throat> very cool, creative way to have some growth, to get people involved to something that isn't so complicated, isn't so difficult, because it's hard what we do. Right. Well, there's a there's a good charro environment in North Texas and in Oklahoma. There are Is there an association? Like, can we show? It, uh, well... <laughs> I can't answer that for you. I mean, but, we're going to have to there, do some research. There's some guys here. Charlie, there's a lot of guys here who, who do it. So you may see them at that event. Once, so once they uh, see the 150K, you, you might see some of those guys Dude, there. Except going. for, except for, that's what I thought too. But they say it's going to be not on distance. It's going to be uh, judged. Judged, okay. Mm. Yes. Mm. Which I have mixed feelings on that mm -hmm. because... The distance is everything. It's like, it's like a it's timer. It just is what it is. Yeah. You know, it's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a way to make it be tangible. Yes. Yeah. You win because you did this. Yes. Not because he thought you won. Yeah. yeah. Well, it when you start talking about new markets in, in the U.S., I mean, it's, there's no question. It's not hard to sell a concept of horses and rainers to Hispanics. And there's plenty around in this area. And that's part of what we have to do a better job of is cultivating those relationships. And this could be a very, you know, it could be a way to do that in a, in a grander way. I don't know. Incorporate some char. Why, could, why couldn't we make a category for just slide contests that are NRHA I, approved? I, I, well, I think you could at some point. Try mm -hmm. to develop a way to make sure it's fair. Yeah. I don't know what category you would put that in, but I think at some point. Call it the slap your thigh and point to the sky category, <laughs> yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, can maybe they can use me as on the picture. You should see the video yeah. of him. Yeah, I mean he slid. Did you have the, Did you have the the, the Garmin on? He no, had nobody. No. Got, he got measured for one. Oh, didn't you? Did? Oh yeah. You were gonna get it made. Yeah. No, I got They're measured incredible. for the hat and the whole the whole yeah. suit. somewhere. There's our There's the biggest Mexican riding suit you ever saw. <laughs> He, the abominable snowman yeah. slid 21 meters, yeah. slapped his thigh, yeah. and pointed to this guy like he had done it a thousand yeah. oh, times. No, it yeah. was pretty legit. You'll have to find the video on that. It's pretty legit. <clears throat> Somewhere there's there's a Mexican cobbler saying, oh, Holy crap. <laughs> oh, this I, I, where did this big Mexican? <laughs> it's it's a muy grande. Hey. Hey. Muy alto, huh? Hey. So let's, we'll, renege, mucho material. Hey, let's renege on what we're talking about, guys. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's reel it back in. It's more huh? bad Spanish. Huh? Yeah. Let's, not, right. let's not get anybody woke from this, yeah. okay? Shit. <laughs> but it, it's pretty hard not to have fun at a chariata, though. It's oh, without a doubt. Time. Oh. There's some great riders. Without a doubt. And mm -hmm. I think that'll be fun. And I think what the 100X is doing is, mm -hmm. is great. And I think that'll be fun. And, you know, another thing I wanted to touch on tonight while we're here is and you touched on it earlier is the uh claiming class at the nrbc because right, you're selling crippled horses that are drugs yes you're gonna try to yes. screw, screw a lot of people well, right. uh, you know yes. and yes bad yeah, we just we just want you to buy this horse and have yeah you're stuck to it if you claim it yeah well and the reason that i thought it should be addressed at this point is because we were trying to make that under the radar about the crippled horse crippled and oh, drugs horses yeah. but now it's out it's they, on facebook people so, figured it out so now <laughs> you yeah. got us oh, you got him social media <laughs> yeah <laughs> So You're now, so smart. <laughs> so, so now we have to talk about it. Yeah. But no, on a serious note, it is, you know, I mean, it is one of the biggest, it's probably the most, I don't know what word I'm looking for. It's probably one of the most interactive posts that the NRBC has ever done. As far as it's got 120 shares. And I don't know how many comments off of each, all the, I mean, it's, it has blown up. And I think people are just overthinking. I mean, it's a $20,000 class. 
that you can show your horse in. And if you think, if you go show in the arena across the street in a novice horse class for $2,000, you're going to show against some horses that are hundred or hundred and fifty thousand dollar horses. Right. And you're going to show against a horse that can mark a seventy five, at yes. least one or two at that yes. horse. Show. Yes. And this is a class that actually lets anybody show in a twenty thousand dollar class. And you know what? It's not all about from management side of NRBC. I don't care if one horse gets claimed. But it's going to deter the $200,000 horse from going in that class yes. so everybody has a chance to show their horse. Yes. It's a yes. great idea. Yes. yes. And like I talked about with you privately, I mean, it's a great idea because people are intimidated to talk to us about what horses we have for sale. They know it's for sale because it's in the class. They can yeah. come meet us, talk to us, say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about so-and-so. I, I don't know. I just think it's a great way to open doors. Yeah, and, and I agree. And I don't... Like I said, it's uh, people are overthinking it. It's not nobody is saying you have to buy that horse, and it's not like we're going to get people that we've never seen before. I mean, this is our industry. Everybody's going to know. It's easy to walk up. The draw comes out two days before. We're going to give people special numbers to put on their pad, a special ooh, color. Special. So, ooh. so you will see them. You'll see them school for days before. Can mine be yellow? No. No, we're not going to do yellow. No, we're bad, not going to do yellow. Bad luck, dude. Yeah. Right. I think we're going to do blue, but at any rate, oh, um, it's going to be it's going to be an opportunity. And you see that horse walk up like we always do. You can walk up to the guy that's going to show it and say, hey, how about this horse? Does he pass a pre-purchase? Can I pre-purchase it? I mean, it's not that difficult. I mean... What we thought was a very simple, simple concept. That's where the mistake was. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I yeah. thought you it was know, simple. Everybody had trouble. We with all it. know the keyboard warriors get carried away. Yeah. I mean, and, that hasn't yeah. been woke yet either. Keyboard yeah. warriors. That's my, that's, that's not my thing, but I've heard <laughs> that's it. That's not my thing. Yeah. And I, you know, and it is what it is. I mean, I, I, I we're excited about it. I think it's going to be a great class. Um, you are not required to claim a horse. If you go to the horse show, if it, if it works for you, if you like you walk in the door and you've got to claim one. That's yeah. A right. Yeah. We're not doing yeah. that. So it's a good uh, idea if you can pull that off. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And, and as show management, like I said, we don't care if any horses get claimed. I mean, if it happens, you're going to see people, I believe, with a more expensive horse go in that class to try and win, win some money. money. Uh, I think it's going to be the fun part of it. I think when we saw the difference between the American last year being 150 bucks. I think you're going to see people showing in that class that maybe wouldn't normally. So I, I think I think it's going to be exciting. And just take it for what it is. Yeah. You're not forced to claim a horse. Just take it for what it is. And I guess it's the world we live in, though, right? I mean, I I don't know. Maybe it's because I I got a superpower. I have the ability if I'm going through Facebook and seeing a post that I don't like. <laughs> I have the ability to just keep scrolling. I don't have to all of a sudden just yeah. post my negative opinion. I mean, I don't, but that's just me. I mean, I, okay. some people need to get it out, so I'm yeah. good with that. I mean, well, yeah. well, how about let's just not condemn people who are trying to be creative. You know, as long as it's a, as long as it's, you know, it's a good faith effort. There's no animal welfare issues where. You know, it, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but why shouldn't we reward people who try to be creative? And that's how new stuff in I'm, I'm a fan of innovation and people willing to try. And that's, yeah. it's important. It's important in our industry. Yeah. We got a couple new <clears throat> new ideas. Claiming class sliding contest. Yeah. yeah. There's I a mean, lot of, <clears throat> I think there's going to be a lot of new ideas over the next mm -hmm. couple of years. And what I applaud NRHA for right now um Billy and the group of people that are on the EC and the and the board they're open minded to new ideas. I mean they're very accepting of hey, let's try this. They're all about growing the sport. Um and you know it's 
not to not to toot our own horn as NRBC board members, but we've been around for a while. I mean, we've come up with some stuff that worked, mm-hmm. some stuff that didn't work. But if if you don't throw some some shit on the wall, you don't know what's going to stick and what's not. And you know, maybe it's going to be a good class. Maybe it's some. If it's if, going on a T-shirt. If we go. <laughs> If we have that class this year and nobody shows up, we won't have it next year. Yeah, don't wear a T-shirt that says Claimer. <laughs> yeah. that's gonna, that's, you're gonna be disappointed. No, I meant, I meant the, the, the shit, shit on, the on the wall sticking. T- Tom McCutcheon, <laughs> quote it. I'll let you wear a Claimer T-shirt. Throw some shit yeah. on the wall. Yeah. I throw shit. Yeah. Tom McCutcheon. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, I, and I, you know what I was and, and <laughs> realistically I mean I don't I don't mean I there's on those posts there's so much support well, there's also yes. so much support yes. I don't mean to to belittle that because there is a, there's a ton of support and we appreciate it it's and, a good idea and yeah, the people that idea. are also against it come on I don't that don't mind that either I mean you know what have your opinion throw it out there and it's fine it, it, it it's all good but I just all I would say is just <laughs> Don't overcomplicate it. It's a twenty thousand dollar added class, and you show in it, and somebody claims your horse or they don't, and you don't have to claim a horse. I mean, that's it. It's just that simple. Right. Well, just for the fact that, like Gunny said, it makes someone with a two hundred thousand dollar horse not enter the class, and that's what everybody's been complaining about for right. the last few years: is they're not going to show in that class because that horse is too good. Yeah. So it takes care of that. Yeah, it, and it and it actually it's a. If you can't afford the two hundred thousand dollar horse, you can go show in a twenty thousand dollar class, and you, you might lose your horse. But I mean, that that's the risk you take. But yeah. it is, and and as far as you know, people are saying, well, you know, some of the comments I saw said, well, you know, they need to have X rays. Well, a pre purchase is a grand. All of a sudden, it gets pretty expensive. If if it's a horse sale. That's one thing. You're putting your horse in a horse sale, and it's going to get bid on. And so, there's a. I'm going to guess if there's 20 horses in this class. This is a guess. I have no idea. I'm going to guess if there's 20 horses in that class, one or two may get claimed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? Mm-hmm. I, I think you may be right in year one, but if it, if it really, you know, if it takes off in year two, you have. Five or yeah, like but it, it's not like claiming races, claiming events on the racetrack or anything new. Is it, it's an old concept. Just hasn't made much of an appearance in reigning. So why not? Why not? Yeah, and we took everything straight from that. We mm-hmm. stole every like we're running Borrow. off of the same. Mm-hmm. Borrow. Borrow. Yeah, it sounds better. Steve. Mm-hmm. Don't say you stole it. Borrowed sounds better than stolen. Borrowed. Borrowed. Yeah. Yes, we did. It sounds a little bad. aggressive, a <laughs> <laughs> little triggering. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but yeah, we're excited we got, about. We it. got more exciting stuff coming up with raining, though. We got the American coming up. We do. You guys got front row tickets, NRHA. I'm a friend. We oh. we we have tickets. Front so. front we, box. No. Sweet. No, we have tickets. Yeah, Do you I got have tickets? a sweet ticket? I'm trying to up my ticket. <laughs> oh, hey. Bill, yeah, I got a sweet yeah, we're ticket. team red. Come in our suite? Well, I'm, I'm sitting in the suite, but we also have some other tickets that oh, they gave us. Oh, okay. Well, so, if there's any, you know. So we can we can talk later. <laughs> Gen- Genny has tickets. He just <laughs> talks to be heard. That's it. <laughs> a lot of times it makes What's, no yeah. sense. What other reason would you talk? <laughs> No. That's, that's a great point, Bill. Yeah. I'm the guy that sat down here quiet for the last ten minutes. He was the one doing all the talking. Uh, his, his house, his rules. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. Also, you're you're just full of you know. I'm feeling more confident with our new commission all the time. Yes, yes, it's feeling absolutely. better and better. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of sense coming from that <laughs> part of the table. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us more about what. So we we've talked a lot about a lot of stuff, but we haven't really talked about what. What's your background? Well, early, grew, not from the not a QHA to APA. No, 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 before I, that, I grew up in in the desert in West Texas. Uh, my grandparents, both sides, had racehorses. 
They ran in that uh, Rio Dosa, Sunland Park, mm-hmm. then Raton Circuit. My aunt and uncle were both trainers, so I spent some time at, at, uh, at racetrack. So that's my horse introduction. But beyond that, I've kind of had three lives. I, I was a journalist for a while. I was a journalist oh, right. for cool. nearly a decade and um, taught school at a university for, for about 10 years, too. And this guy, some of you may know, uh, Jim Jennings gave me a call one time to help uh, with some uh, things in the AQHA um, journal. I helped him out a little bit, and <clears throat> they asked me to come for a one-year sabbatical, and, and, and that was 27 years ago, and maybe I'll call the university and let them know I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> but I never came back, so that's a long, that's the, that's the quick and dirty. So you got into being an executive through <clears throat> helping with journalism. Yeah, I, that's how I that's how I started, and then I went to work full time at AQHA, and that was the I had done some work for associations, a lot of different kinds of associations, when I was a university mm-hmm. professor. So I had a little background in association management, things like that. But uh, okay, uh, I'm going to say something. I've never managed that, a thing in my life. Yeah. I, no, you never did. But <clears throat> I may never get another horse registered again at this point. But I'm going to say. That okay. One of the things that I've seen in our industry is trying to conform us to some of the things that AQHA has done. And I have tried to tell everybody for the last 10 years we are it. Reigning is, we, we alluded it to it earlier in the show, reigning is the crown jewel right now, in my opinion of the Western world. We've seen AQHA struggle. We've actually seen APHA step up and gain a lot. If you're just looking at momentum, APHA has gained a lot more momentum in the last five years than AQHA. Mm -hmm. There was 85 to 100 horses in the APHA aged event class there, and there was not enough for a go around in the finals at the AQHA World yeah. Show for the junior and the senior. Yes. Yeah. So my point is, let's. I, I am so tired of hearing the argument of, well, AQHA did this, AQHA did that. I don't care about any of that. We are what we are, and we have created something special, and we are, everybody's looking up at us. Why are we trying to do a lot of the things that some of these breed associations have done and some of the rules they've put into place? Uh, that's a good question. When, when we absolutely are at the top of the heap. Uh, why do we need quarter horse papers? Okay, Kamish. You can stutter. <laughs> well, okay. He put you on a big spot there. Well, I it mean, was that, all lighthearted before yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm going to have to walk carefully. But, it was all lighthearted. But, you know... It, in my time at APHA, we had to reinvent what we did and how we did it because it had gotten complicated. It had gotten too complicated, and it was a struggle to get a horse registered. So I just believe in the market, and if the market's telling you it's not working, you need to do something else. And so we, because we had a, re- a good board willing to do some things differently, we were able to change some of the rules that allows horses to be uh, paint horses to be registered genetically and which is which is an important feature and and it allowed us to grow um, and, to, and to grow every year for at least a decade when I when I was there and it will continue to grow because it's under in uh, Dave Dillon took my spot he'll just carry on it and it was you know just the things like the Chrome Cash product they brought them. That's just a simple side pot is what that is, but it gives it gives people a chance to earn back some more of their money in different ways. And it, we it's been effective. And uh, we didn't have a we didn't have a, we introduced it early at APHA. Um, we we tested it in the barrel uh, world. That's where we originally tested it, and it just exploded. And it and it did well because it's really simple. It's not complicated. It's not. We're not chasing down stallion owners asking them for money. It was a simple thing, and it. It's. I, I learned a lot about that, about simplicity, and so uh, 
<clears throat> I think that's I think that's the key to make these things as simple as we can make them, and not overcomplicate them, which associations can do. That's that can that's a common thread in a lot of groups is they overcomplicate things, make them too complicated. So we're gonna, we're going to work on some simplicity. Yeah. And Were you trying to like go that? Like reining horses don't need quarter horse papers or paint papers. No, just no, I was not going that route at all, because I think it's it's super important that. Well, let me back up. <clears throat> do they need them? I don't think they do. I, I think okay. I Darlin's not painted as a mare that we have, and she's produced six or seven hundred thousand dollars in earners, and there was a time, ten years ago, where we couldn't get anything for those papers now or for those, for those babies. Because and now because she's a paint and she, we can't have her registered as a quarter horse. Now it makes absolutely no difference. People will, I mean, I turned down a hundred thousand for a year old the other day uh, out of her, no quarter horse papers. So I think NRHA is big enough now that we don't need that. However, uh, I don't, I don't think we need AQHA for that reason. However, I am a supporter of AQHA. I grew up with AQHA, and I think it's great that we can also have AQHA as somebody that we register our horses with. And it, I think it's, I think AQHA does a lot of great stuff, but I think they do. I'm not putting words in your mouth. This is probably not who you're talking about, but. I think AQHA overcomplicates things. I think APHA has done a great job of growing. The Chrome Cash is a great... Is it a ton of money? No, but it's goodwill. It's goodwill. It puts AQHA in a very good light. and APHA. I mean APHA in a very good light. And it makes you feel good about APHA and dealing with APHA. AQHA, in my opinion if AQHA is listening, needs to do more things to be more breeder-friendly, exhibitor-friendly, um, owner-friendly. You know, I think there's a lot of things they could do different. And it comes as simple as what you just said. Let's, let's not overcomplicate it. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. Make it easy to do business with them, and it feels like they're helping us out and... Yeah, you know, it goes both ways, and and I think it, it so it goes all the way, and I don't know if there's probably there's probably not any discussions with FEI anymore, but that just takes it to the next level. I mean, was FEI was reigning in the FEI a good thing? I think it was an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I think reigning in the World Equestrian Games was an amazing thing. One of the best things. If you're talking about what AQHA could do for reigning versus what FEI could do for reigning, not even in the same league, in my opinion. FEI took us to another level. But when they got unreasonable to the point that we could not live, live with them, then we couldn't live with them because we're big enough. We don't need we, them. We don't need them. Yep. Would, they, would they be great for us? Of course. We would love to go back to the World Equestrian Games. FEI would be great for us. But if you want to be too difficult to get along with, then we can't get along with you. And I, my hope is at some point down the road, and I dealt with personally with a lot of the FEI guys, and my hope is at some point down the road, they get a group of guys in there that their main objective is the equine athletes and promotion of the equine sport, all of equine sport and not just about their position in the organization. And that's FEI. So AQHA is not near at that level, but if they, to me, there's a lot of things they could do that would be more user friendly, more interactive with the rain. I mean, who better to to have a collaboration with with NRHA and AQHA to grow the sport to get, continue to grow the sport? Well, there's always the slide contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, thanks and, for that, Gunny. And flip flops. <laughs>
flip flops. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> I'm the only guy at the table that took a wind picture in flip flops shorts. I remember that. I remember that. What would you say is the hardest thing dealing, you know, being behind the scenes with all these different large associations? What's the hardest thing um, dealing with that big, big group of, group of people? Whoa! Excuse me for a second. Joe, it's a great question. <laughs> Dude, did you write that yeah, down? I, I thought about it on the drive over. Whoa! Okay. Well, thanks. You gave me a second to think about it a little yeah. bit. So it actually reigning is simpler. A single discipline is simpler in a in a multidiscipline environment like APHA or AQHA. All of those disciplines want your attention and your energy and your money and everything. So that gets really complicated to balance all of that. You have a little bit of that in reigning because you have different constituent groups but not at the scale you have in a, uh, like a breed registry. So it's, it's recognizing that, that uh, non-pros have a voice. It's recognizing that trainers have a voice. It's, re it's thinking about the discipline like a tabletop, and, and all of those legs matter. They all matter. It, and, and trying to create an environment where they all know they matter, and part of that is just giving people access to you, and I learned that a long time ago. <clears throat> this sounds kind of silly, but I sent my phone number out when I started at APHA to 50,000 people in one day. But people want to access you. They want to be able to, and, and, it, and you don't get overwhelmed by it. It's just they just want to know they can talk to somebody. You may not be able to solve their problem, but they want to know there's somebody there they can reach, reach out to. So I don't, it's not a challenge, it's just you have to recognize that everyone in our industry is passionate about what they do, but they don't always agree, but that's okay. That's, that's just fine, and you know, you may not ever be able to solve all their problems, but you can at least give a listen and figure out some ways to, to make things a little simpler. So it's not a challenge to me, it's just a recognition that you have different constituent groups and they have different needs, and they have different expectations. And you have to be able to dance on that dance floor without tripping and falling. You, know? you, you sent your number out to 50,000 people? One day. And in one week, you blocked a gunny. Well, well. I had a lot of questions. <laughs> I, I didn't say I didn't block anyone. I had a lot of very important questions. He blocked yeah, me. He, did, he, he blocked didn't me. answer. He blocked me. Put your phone on the I table. I did not. Put your phone on the table. Let's see. I it. did not got, block We'll do it you. live. Did We're going to do it live. I might block you now. Yeah, that's right. It's okay. You call me later. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That. That. Well, where do you so what what are your expectations from we you know we touched on it earlier about how much it's grown before you got here and it's kind of grown organically from outside the association. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you what do you see for the for the next seven, eight, nine, ten years? <clears throat> well, I, I don't think in ten year increments, because I think that's probably too difficult to really do. That's fair. It's the next three or four years. What is what does that mean? Well, I think uh, I think um, I think we have to manage the growth effectively because you can struggle with growth too. I think we have to manage the growth uh, effectively. We have to be able to manage th just simple things like paperwork, things like that that come through the office because that escalates. So you can't create an environment where people are struggling to to do business with you. I think we have to be, to create an environment where we're more accessible and easier to do business with. I think that's important. But I also think we need to reach out. I think there are opportunities for us to grab what we call non-endemic sponsors, people outside of the horse world. I think there are some opportunities. In fact, we've had conversations with a couple of sponsor prospects. But I think that's the kind of thing that might really elevate um, reigning is put it put it in an environment where we can we can earn some sponsorships from some really big some really big names and move us into and we can't be afraid to get into an environment where people don't necessarily know reigning so we're teaching them at the same time and I think that's an important thing too is that we're 
we're, we're seeing anecdotally people come into the market who are from hunter jumpers in other areas. I've talked with a few Arabian folks who have come in. And so it's, it's trying to educate them about raining at the same time as, as managing the growth. So I think, I think we have to be in a good spot where we treat people uh, in a way in which they can really appreciate NRHA as an entity but really grow the sport too. To, to me, it's about the reigning horse. That's what you're trying to do. NRHA will grow and do just fine if the reigning horse does just fine. So, you know, we're actively pursuing some of those opportunities with non-endemic sponsorship. They're hard to do, but I think there's some opportunity in. I think we have good contacts here in the U.S. and in Europe with some of the non-endemic sponsors. So it's it's one of the challenges we face is a lot of our sponsorship money is endemic. It's in the horse community. Mm -hmm. So if you get hit by some economic problem, it affects everybody, and we need to cushion ourselves against that. And I think that's the challenge for the next few years is how do we cushion ourselves against some economic downturns because we know it's going to happen. We're not sure when, but we know it's going to happen. And if we have those kind of uh, – a non-endemic sponsors, it's it's a cushion and it helps. Those are the things, uh, besides what we talked about earlier, it's being able to supply trainers and have trainers in a position to manage that growth. Uh, those I think those are the important things for the future. And then I think we've got to be able to tell a good story about how well we take care of our animals and about how well we care for them in a world that's skeptical about about what we do and other people do with horses. So that's a, we've had a lot of conversations about how we're telling that story, and I think we can tell it. I mean, I, I really believe we can. There's some good examples out there. I think, we have, I think we have trainers who take extraordinary care of their animals, and we can picture that and we can tell that story. And I think we're going to have to do that because we're going to have more people entering the business who don't enter it from an agrarian background. So they're going to come with some preconceptions, and we need we need to help them see us as we are, not as some genius on Facebook sees us. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's yes. tough. And the thing is, we never, speaking of genius on Facebook, I mean, we never knew how many there were. There's a lot. I mean, yeah. A yeah. lot. Was, <clears throat> yeah. We thought geniuses in society were like a were really rare. small number. Yeah. No, they're yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, the, the intelligence is yeah. everywhere. Yeah, the nail Keyboard, lady. Keyboard the, genius. Yeah, yeah. whoa. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Yeah. She well, works yeah. hard, too. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I, can't, I mean, speaking of can't, some, can't speaking of some her. non complicated word sponsors, the show needs some of those. I don't yeah. know what you said. I don't know what the word was. Some <laughs> no, college educated. Endemic. 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 I'm, I'm, endemic. I'm sorry, Billy. This is. We need some non endemic sponsors, too. I mean, the show does. I mean, besides Purina and Ernie. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is what happens. You make a really good point. Yeah. yeah. And, and then these two fools just lose. I got their it. Mind. I, got, I, I heard the whole point. I, thought I tried to get out of a show one time, and these fools waited on me for a few hours. And I tried to get out of it. I was busy. I was busy. <laughs> I'm yeah. too busy. We know he's never busy. So that was his worst excuse. <laughs> I was busy that day, Billy. Yeah. Well, I'm still, we're, we're almost to the end of this, and I'm still horrified. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been it's been great, and I think too. I think one of the things that that NRHA has is very lucky about is financially. I know NRHA is in, in a in great shape right now, probably the best shape it's ever been in. And I think the biggest part of the reason is that I'm not going to name any names, but. I mean, anybody can get on and look at the finance committee uh, on the NHA website. We have people doing that that we could not afford to hire. Yep. You know, we have volunteers that we could not afford to hire that have the background of, you know, running huge businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think we get some really good direction on that. And we're extremely fortunate. NRHA's accountant, John Foy, is amazing, though, too. And John's been there forever, and he is amazing. John, I am not afraid to say John's name because John is amazing. Yeah. John, John probably really is a genius. So Yeah. So, but, you know, that's, a, that's an important fact. We have great leadership. We have great staff. We have great members. We have great trainers. Not, actually, not everybody can say that. 
and and I think we can say that. And and I can say, having been on the EC and been on a board and been on committees, I can say that never one time have we been in a committee meeting saying, "Let's see how we can piss everybody off." I mean, that's not. I can Never tell you up. that it has always every meeting, every every committee meeting, every board meeting, every meeting has always been about how can we grow the sport of raining. And and everybody takes that that you know road. Every that's everybody's thought. And and so many times I see I don't agree with every everything that that the NRHA board or EC or committees, I don't agree with everything. None of us agree with everything. But to me, the way to, to approach that, contact your board members, mm-hmm. contact your committee members. Don't go on Facebook and make a big, huge thing about it because everybody sees that. Mm-hmm. Let's grow what we all love. Let's not knock it down on social media let's grow what we all Mm -hmm. love if you have a problem don't take it to the world because that world there's there's 10 percent of the world that sees that actually plays in our world the other 90 percent go ooh, yeah man they got problems Mm -hmm. yeah that's a beehive and yeah and it's very frustrating to me because i you know i know everybody's Mm -hmm. intentions are great and even if I don't agree with it, I know that they didn't go into that meeting saying, well, how can we do something stupid? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because that's not what anybody thinks. <laughs> it just, you know, I, I mean, the, and the best way to handle it is, in my opinion, go talk to your board members. Well, and that's, that's what I mean by being accessible. If, when people are afraid to reach out to you, they reach out to something like Facebook. And, and that's what we're going to try to do even better is that if you want to solve a problem, that's not the way to do it. There's another way to do it. There's a pro there's a way to do it in in a way when you actually get your problem solved, not just uh, complain about it. And social media is kind of a bastion of partial truths, you know, which is probably worse than a lie. And I have a wish. Yeah. I have a wish now that when NRHA makes a decision, they don't, let social media sway that because I've seen it over the last 10 years of being involved with decisions made and social media going crazy about it. And if you were to look at it, of the 100% of social media that goes crazy, 3% of them ever show in a rainy. Yep. And the rest of them... So we are taking, we have in the past, taking the opinion of the least qualified people to have an opinion. And that would be my wish going forward, is that NRHA stays strong in their decisions and does not react to Facebook. And And I know it's happened. It's not, I've been on the board, I've been on the EC when it has happened, when we've made a decision and Facebook blows up, and we go. Ah, ah. Let's, you know, yeah, you can't manage by Facebook. It's it's a it's a bad habit to get into. And it you're like you're you're feeding the bears, you yeah. know. I mean, mm-hmm. it's you do one or two times you overturn it because, and we all know a few of those. I'm not gonna. Don't worry, I'm not gonna <laughs> well, say you, any names. Well, you Manny's teach real people. worried over there, but I'm not gonna throw out any of the names of these people. Well, you teach people that that's the way you interact, yeah, and right. you don't want to do that. You want to teach people that if if you want to solve a problem, there's a way. It's communicating with the leadership, communicating with uh, you know, communicating with me, communicating with staff, communicating with our board. That's the way you address issues. First of all. You might find out that it's not really the issue you think it is. A hundred percent might not even be true, right? Or at least it's a partial truth. So there's always, I, in my history, when you have these little, I call them Facebook dust ups. I just call some of them. I get on the phone. They're shocked, stunned that you would call them, yeah. and usually they're backing up pretty good. Yeah. You know, I agree with that. It's, it, I just don't. I just think it's a. Uh, social media's got a place. It's just 
not a good place to make big decisions. Agreed. It's a place to grow our show. Give some stuff away. It's got its place. Yeah, and and I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. And I and I want to be perfectly clear. We love all the idiots. Yeah. Yeah. Watch the show. (laughs) All the idiots. Because we are idiots. Yeah. We're going to make T-shirts. Yeah. We're, we are idiots. We're going to give them away. <clears throat> I don't Remember how we used to give stuff away? We don't give stuff away. No, we, we don't give much stuff time. away. Yeah, but I wanted to say it again. We should give them stuff oh, away. Oh, boy. You're nervous, and I just lost half our viewers. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't care. You, you may have just yeah. gained some. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Listen, gained a little bit. Yeah. Listen, Billy, we gave you our full income of what this episode's going to bring in already, okay? Yeah. We, we gave it to you, okay? Good. Thank you. With <laughs> massive donations to the NRHA, yeah, haven't thank we? You. We're making thank eight, so nine much. bucks. What are we making? <clears throat> eight, nine bucks an episode now? Yeah, something like that. Hey! Wow. Hey! Wow. Yes. Dude, we're gonna wow. and we're gonna donate the proceeds mm-hmm. to this to, show to NRHA on the live contest. Well, thank you, so, thank so you for the quarter. You're gonna get thank our seventy five dollars. <laughs> yeah, our seventy five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're not gonna <laughs> donate <laughs> our proceeds my, to the show. Minus <laughs> minus cost of producing the show. Yeah. So uh, you owe us a check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where do we send the invoice? Because <laughs> I am not Randy Paul. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe we should get oh, a yeah. sponsor for giveaways, like yeah. Clark's Pump and Shop. Hey, that's right. <laughs> or yeah. Purina. Or Just Ditch It. <laughs> or Cinch. Yeah. Cinch. <laughs> or the NRHA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she disappeared. Well, well, we could talk for another hour, but yeah. people are generally tired of us after 45 minutes, so. It's good talk. Throw the show. Wrap it up. We appreciate we'll uh, you appreciate you having you down. It's been yeah, great. I'd love to come back. It'd be yeah. great. It's been great. And maybe maybe next time we can ask you harder questions. You know, we can we know we'll know you better, so we can put you more on the well, spot. We'll see how he does. Yeah. See yeah. how he does over the next few months. Yeah. What Bring I'm him afraid back. Of. And yeah. then I'm yeah. afraid of that. Yeah, see what Billy, happens. things are in the tank. How did <laughs> you evaluate your performance? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. You think Thank you're sticking you. around? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Can't awesome. wait. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, next time hopefully our uh, you know, the food situation. It won't be it won't be it grilled was, chicken, it'll be pizza. It was again. fantastic. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was I thought it was great. Yeah, it was, was good. No, it was, it was a very good really meal. Good. Well, oh, really Mandy good. did amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mandy I she was. Did great. Yeah, no, Mandy did quinoa, it for quinoa. Quinoa yeah, was no. perfect. When you're going healthy, we couldn't have been better. Than no, that. I, thought, I thought we mm-hmm. did good. Yeah, I thought awesome. we did good. Mandy, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Yes, so good. thank you. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Grow the yeah. show. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>